know if it's really a stealth camp I'm doing tonight or a boondock or what. All right, there's some huge bumps here. Virginia City is known for being a very haunted place as well. 12 o'clock or so, he heard a, like a scream upstairs. Hey guys, Chris here. Today I am trying to find a place to camp for the night. I'm uh, avoiding snow this week. And I uh, just need a snow break. I'm out in the desert, but I'm at the edge of Carson City, so it's... I don't know if it's really a stealth camp I'm doing tonight, or a boondock, or what, but I'm gonna kind of car camp kind of out in the desert. At least that's my plan. I don't really have uh, uh, a destination. I'm just trying to figure this out as I go here. See if I can pull this off. I was looking at the uh, Walmart, and there was just a lot of activity and cameras <laughs> and I was like yeah there, there was some sagebrush just off the uh, parking lot of the Walmart in uh, Carson City here and I was thinking maybe I could camp out there because you can park there right you can park there for the night and there's campers parked there and things like that but I just didn't feel right about it and also I saw a sign it said no loitering no uh, soliciting no trespassing in this big empty lot and I was like all right all right so anyways that's what I'm doing and uh, got some good food and some uh, history and stories to talk about tonight so that's next I am running out of options <laughs> I may need to uh, spend the night at the local Walmart see how that goes <laughs> it'd be a car camp in the Walmart and uh, so I'm, t I'm looking around for a spot here and the Sun's going down really fast but a couple of my options I had one of them the road was closed off some kind of construction on this road and another one I the road ran out and I thought it went through and then it was all private property so the uh, stealth camping boondocking thing that people do is like regularly like the people that uh, truck and RV and and uh, camp permanently that's got to be tough they I mean they do a lot of stuff with national forests and state parks and things like that but but uh, just doing some local stuff that's really challenging so uh, we'll see but at least I got a, I got a, an option of Walmart and we'll see what else I can find lousy road so that's a plus <laughs> there's big rocks in it not getting any better all right I'm at the top of something here I'm a looking around Let's see what we got here oh my gosh yeah much respect to the people that uh, spend a life living on the road traveling from thing to thing obviously they're more organized than I am tonight I am just had my uh, game plan A and B and they both quickly got wiped out and uh, so now I'm scrambling for C D E F and G H all right there's some huge bumps here and I do not trust this road anymore this way so it is best to go with your gut on these things so what I'm looking at is that's me this is my Gaia GPS I strongly recommend getting this one's free and it tells me right where I am tells me all the dirt roads the creeks the main roads obviously cities tells me pretty much everything but I see up here there's some spur roads that come off and I could maybe go out here on this loop if this is not a terrible road. And this continues on down this way. But I'm in the hills between Carson City and Dayton up here. But uh, I 
think that's what we're gonna do here. But this this helps me see in the dark, literally. Because <laughs> otherwise it's just you're just guessing. I may have found something. <clears throat> it's off of this road here. I know exactly where I am. And it's level. And I got some bushes right here. I could oh <laughs> kind of drops off over here. <sighs> All right, this is uh this is pretty crazy, but I'm gonna see if I can make it work. Okay, I got a nice level spot and a level spot for the tent. And now I just gotta figure out which tent I wanna go with. I think we're gonna go with the Lynx 2. There's the Lynx 1, Lynx 2, right there. And then we got the REI that saved my bacon last weekend in the windstorm. But this one looks perfect, plus it'll blend in with the uh, Nevada desert here, so. Yizzy Light by Trackology 750 Camping Chair. Those are the, the technical name there anyways. But real comfortable chair. I like this chair a lot and I am gonna cook in my new chair here. So. Okay, so for tonight we are having some asparagus, baked potato, a flat iron steak. I picked that up at the Walmart, El Walmarto down the uh, other side of the mountain here. <laughs> and of course a beer. And this is uh, the one I had last time in the uh, hurricane <laughs> essentially. but. Starting off with a beer, and then we're gonna be cooking right outside the tent here. We're not in bear country, that's good. I don't have to really be concerned about bears, predators, but I am gonna just cook just a few feet outside my vestibule here, sit in the chair, and it's a nice 45 degree night kind of thing, so. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. And that is the uh, Great Basin, Leave No Trace. Kind of the backpacker beer. <laughs> For all the backpackers, I like to bring beer with them. Like me.
heat up. And we got the uh, dollar store cutting board. You can always afford things at the dollar stores. <laughs> This looks like some kind of a washboard from the 1950s, doesn't it? Something you would uh, take down to the creek and wash your socks on. That sock board. <laughs> so the drive in on the GPS, I could see that there's a canyon down below me and the Carson River and there's some overlooks like, you know, uh, ridges and some uh, buttes and things that look down into this canyon. So I think we got kind of a cool spot, kind of by accident here, because this was not planned. This was my plan, pretty much D, I think. This was plan D, to hopefully get into the uh, mountains here. I think these are the pine, the pine nut mountains, if I'm not mistaken. That is a big one. Smallest one I could find. Boy, it smells good already. Wow. <laughs> Love it. I'm gonna cut what I need here. I should cook a little faster if I just cut them in half. So. Alright. I'm just going to put the whole thing together like that. Why not? Got one skillet, so I got to make it work. All right, this is the Yuko spoon fork setup. This thing is really nice. I like it together. And so it's got a really sharp knife on it. And the knife is on the opposite side of the spoon, which makes sense because you need the fork and the knife to cut, to cut with. So and it's actually a pretty sharp knife on that. Four dollars, no, let's see. $3.95 at Walmart? Is it $4.95? Very, very affordable. Oh yeah, coming together, things like that. And then tonight, uh, I think I got a couple of couple of ghost stories from the area here, and I'm gonna tell those couple of stories. Um, and actually, they're from people that I actually talked to, which is really interesting. Up here, actually, up at uh, Virginia City, Nevada, a uh, couple of people I talked to uh, a couple of years ago about some experiences they had and I thought yeah maybe we'll take a few minutes to talk about that before I go to bed so that's what's on the menu I do like the vestibules they give you a little bit of a windbreak a little place to put your stuff this tent the Elp Link 2 has Two doors, two vestibules, two poles. It's a two-pole setup tent, and uh, it's it's uh, works really well. It's a little heavier. It's it's a more affordable tent. I think they're about 130 bucks right now. Um, I haven't looked at it for well over a year. What the Elf Link Two is, but that looks really good. Right. All right, dinner is served. I've been hearing coyotes. Um, pretty, pretty good sized pack behind me, maybe half a mile or so. I could hear them yelping a few minutes ago. This is really good. <clears throat> mm. 
Mmm. Very tender steak. I cooked it medium rare, which is how I like it. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, it's fun when you do one or two nights, you can bring food. When you're on three, four, five, six, seven, eight, on up nights, it's, you gotta do, you know, the freeze dried meals, things like that. Can't bring fresh food. <laughs> I got some steaks from last Tuesday. <laughs> Really? In your pack? In your backpack? <laughs> yeah. Not gonna work out too well. But yeah, just for an overnighter, and I'm just car camping anyway, so I'm not even backpacking. But feels like backpacking. I'm doing everything I normally do with a backpack, except the car is right there. <laughs> All right. I do love having the vestibules. They make life easier. Just a little extra space there for your gear and the transitions out. Uh, I really like this hat. <laughs> it's cool having a hat with a built-in light in it. Also, it looks like uh, some eyes behind me or something. <laughs> something behind me? Is there something behind me? I don't... I heard something. <laughs> okay, so just north of here, north of where I'm at, that way, is the Virginia Range. And the Virginia Range is a desert mountain range at about six, 7,000 feet. And at 6,000 feet is the town, the silver mining boom town from the 1870s, 80s, 90s, called Virginia City. And Virginia City had a mining boom in the 1859, 60s, and in the 70s, it got really big. It actually, at one point, had 30,000 people, had 11 churches, and over 100 saloons. <laughs> Pretty crazy. And, uh, Mark Twain had his start up there in the 1870s. He worked for the Territorial Times newspaper uh, for a couple years, wrote funny little articles for the newspaper to entertain the miners. And in fact, he was challenged to a duel from the editor of another newspaper up there. And he wisely, I think he said, I will take that challenge and I will see you tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. And then he, uh, wisely said, I'm leaving in 20 minutes and getting the heck off this mountain. <laughs> so he left and went on to, down to Lake Tahoe and then ended up in San Francisco and he did his writings and stuff. But, but Virginia City is known for being a very haunted place as well. Uh, there was a lot of accidents because of the mines, uh, gunfights, all the saloons, a lot of men bumping heads. It was the old frontier, family squabbles, stabbings things like that happening. And they had a hospital built in 1875. It was the uh, Mary Louise Hospital is what that was called back then. And now it's still up, it's still, um, the building is still there, but now it's the uh, St. Mary's Art Center, which is really cool. They converted it to an art center, uh, I think in the uh, 70s, really interesting. And I actually had a couple of photography exhibits up there a couple of years ago. I had a landscape photography exhibit, and then about four years ago, I had a wild horse photography exhibit up there. And that was a lot of fun uh, to do that. But I talked to a lady and, uh, at, the, at a bar up there a few years ago, and there was a number of people all sitting outside and they started talking about ghost stories up there. And she said that her and her husband were winter keepers at the old hospital, which is now the St. Mary's Art Center. And they, as a winter keeper, you keep the heat going and you do projects and, and uh, just do maintenance and keep the place going. And then you can do other things on the side like writing or whatever, kind of like the shiny. <laughs> I'll do my writing. 
up here. And uh, they went to bed one night on the, I think there's four floors. I think they were on the third floor, um, possibly the second floor. But they were in bed. The husband fell asleep. She was reading a book. And then all of a sudden she heard above her in the bedroom or the, the room above her footsteps going back and forth, back and forth. And she sat there for several minutes, put the book down, and she was like, okay, that's really interesting because I know we are the only ones here, plus it's January and it's really late at night and all the doors are locked and everything like that. She nudged her husband and said, are you hearing that? She thought he was asleep and he says, yes, I haven't slept since I started hearing that. And she said, what are we going to do? And he said, I don't know. And so they sat there for, for a few more minutes listening and this footsteps going back and forth right above them. And she decided, well, I can't just sit here. And so she went out of the bedroom, down the long hall, up the staircase to the landing and then the stairs continued and she went to the landing and she didn't yell but she was you know, loud enough to be heard and she said could you please be quiet we're trying to sleep and then she came downstairs down the hallway back in the bedroom closed the door got in bed and they both sat there for a few more minutes and then it just stopped like that <laughs> Isn't that wild? <laughs> then that was a story, a real life story that I heard. It's not my story, but it's some, something someone told me that I heard. Um, also, there was another time, that same night, there was a guy, his name was Ash, and I know Ash from the Bucket of Blood Saloon. He is a, he's a kind of a doorman there. He'll check people's IDs, uh, let them know if there's room at the bar or if they have any questions or a little bit of security if you need they need that so he works down there and he dresses in full attire with guns and the hat and everything there's a lot of people that do that up there it's, it's really cool it's a lot of fun to go up there and see people dressed up and i've been up there and i've dressed up and my family is dressed up uh, we've we've gone up there and done that it's fun but he said he worked at the gold hill hotel and bar which is just down the road a little ways from Virginia City, maybe a quarter mile, just it's another community up there. It's a mining community. And he was a night manager up there uh, years ago. And he said a couple came in one afternoon, had the room, got the room, went upstairs. And, <clears throat> and because he's a night manager, she had to sit there, you know, till late at night. And about 12 o'clock or so, he heard a, like a scream upstairs. And he was like, oh my gosh. And then he's behind the desk. And then after a, a few minutes, they both came down, the husband and the wife came down. And this was like after midnight, 1220 or something. They both came down the stairs. Husband had the suitcase in each hand. The wife was right behind him. And he says, is everything okay? And they didn't answer him. They just kept going, went through the hotel, out the front door, he followed them as best he could. They were moving really fast, apparently, according to him. And he went to the doorway and he just saw them get in their vehicle, throw the suitcases in, and they just drove off. It turned out uh, that he found out later, uh, maybe they called him back or, or, or a um, cleaning person. I don't know, I can't remember exactly how he found out, but what happened was, they were in bed, it was, they had the window open so they get some moonlight coming in or some light and they were asleep and then they were awoke and they felt like a presence or something. At the foot of the bed was a woman in a full dress from the 1800s. She had hands on the bedposts like that and she was just staring at them. And they were like, oh my God, they woke up and they were just freaked out, turned the light on. I don't know if when they turned the light on, she disappeared, but they both saw this, according to the story from Ash, and they got their stuff and they just got out of there as fast as they could. And that's when Ash saw them come down the staircase and leave. And that was at the Gold Hill Hotel and Saloon, which is still operational. It's still there. It's, it's really cool. It's, it's, 
an old place, but very interesting. It's a very haunted place up there. So <laughs> a lot of stories. There's books about it. There's, it's on TV shows. I don't know the names of these, these TV shows that they have. The America's Most Haunted or something would, be <laughs> would make sense. Um, but really cool. So if you guys like these stories, I can do more um, uh, scary stories, ghost stories, interesting stories like that. And um, we can also, um, I also plan on talking more about history and stuff like that. I, I just love it. It's just fun. And I miss the campfires because of the fires and all that. So I haven't had a campfire in a long time. It's fun to do campfires and have stories around that as well. So, all right, well, I'm going to get to sleep. I'm going to go check out this canyon that we came in. <laughs> well, I can't see what's going on, but it looks pretty cool down there. And just didn't then get my breakfast, my coffee going. And so I got to get some rest. So we will see you guys in the morning. Morning, you guys. Slept really good. And I think we found a great little campsite for last minute, last ditch effort here. And uh, really a rugged looking little canyon right down below. Yeah, I'm gonna go check that out and then come back and have some coffee. All right, well, this turned out to be a pretty decent campsite considering I was gonna possibly camp at Walmart because I just ran into much, too much private property and the couple of places I was looking at uh, had road closures on them. And I was like, I gotta spend the night somewhere. So, so uh, anyways, looking good. This road goes, I don't know if you can see it, but it goes at the bottom of this canyon here, it goes all the way up. I'll be up to the highest point of these mountains. Not sure, but this is a wild horse country out here. Saw some tracks and droppings, but they are up here. And that is the uh, Virginia range right over that way. And Virginia City is on the other side of that peak right there. So it shows how close I really am. And that is great wild horse country up there as well. got this to start me off for the day. I forgot my egg box in the uh, fridge. I had a little six pack egg box. I forgot that. I occasionally will forget something and that was it today. So.
All right, nice view there. Nice quiet place to have coffee and have my breakfast. No wind this time, <laughs> zero wind, so that's good. I had a few pickup trucks go by and uh, had some joggers early this morning run by. But I'm on a side road of a side road on a back road. <laughs> so I'm kind of out here and uh, yeah, it worked out, it worked out okay. It's just nice to get out for the night, so. All right, you guys, thanks for watching, and uh, we will see you next time. As always, keep hiking.